Awol, Shalom, Rastafari. It wouldn't be good of us to ignore this most recent um, hate crime. And when one asks us as Rastafari um, about hate crime, the answer should be yes. Yes, we hate crime. You know, who who would love crime except except an evil doing? And we'd like just to present a, a, a little brief commentary to this recent um, this recent quote, what's being called a hate crime or a bias crime here in the in the New York in the New York area or in Midwood Brooklyn area um, against um, the European Jews or the Polish and German Germanic Jews, you know, as well as I think there's another thing where somebody on the Shabbat got robbed or beat up or something to that effect. And today they had a rally, it's the Sunday, on the Sunday they had a rally with um, certain leaders and some black, some of the black politicians and other leaders, community leaders, they were out there marching, I think in some so-called tolerance, uh, a tolerance um, demonstration or demonstration seeking more tolerance. The good thing, at least, is that the so-called, um, 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 what they call that again, the, when they offer the money and stuff like that, the the money that they, what's the, what's the name of that again? For any information or whatever, it went up from 2000 to 30000 The reward, the reward for information, thank you, the reward. And interesting that they have to, you know, put that out there, put a figure out there to get somebody who sees something. But there's a lot of strange things about this whole this whole incident. And we want to just say this for the record. First of all, on hate crime, yes, I and I hate crime. Who would love crime but an evil doer would love crime? But it's interesting these so-called hate crime laws because they don't seem to be universally enforce if it's a if it's a black person or something for black persons a whole bunch of investigation before they even would say it's a possible hate crime but already with this recent incident in the a predominantly Jewish neighborhood of Midwood Brooklyn so forth and so on I think it was on Eastern Parkway if I'm correct this incident happened on Eastern Parkway well here's the background if you haven't heard about it in the Midwood section of Brooklyn Three or so cars were burnt, were set on fire. Um, they had swastikas written, as well as, I think, KKK on a couple of the, the cars. So this is at least seemingly clearly a biased incident. But the first thing that came to mind, and some may dislike us for saying it, but we started to think about that, um, the, the, that, that despicable case of the child abuse and molestation that occurred with uh, the 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 Cle the Clipsy, the Clepsy boy, and, and this Aaron, whatever he called himself, what Aaron Levi or whatever like that, who was a Jew, and it was a Jew on Jew incident, and we restrained ourselves from even saying anything about it because it was just a horrible crime all around. Even though some might say, well, look, it's a Jew on Jew crime because every time some incident happens in the black neighborhood. If it's a black person that did it, people just say, oh, that's, that's how black people are. It's a black-on-black -black crime. But now, when it happens in the Jewish neighborhood or when a Jew is found out, a European Jew, let's qualify it, but this is how people talk nowadays, ignorantly. But anyway, when a European Jew does it to another European Jew or a white Jew, you understand, this has a whole city in the uproar against this one individual, not because he's a Jew and not against the community because this sort of crime is happening in the community, but they focus on the so-called, or at least the accused, wrongdoer, and not blanket the whole community. Now, this, this, this is interesting because they don't do this with, with black people. So hate crime really needs to be defined a little better, you understand, than just in a general hate crime because, of course, hate crime. We hate crime. Who wouldn't hate crime? Oh, it's a hate sort of crime. So that, this makes it very dubious when you understand the law and the need to use words to really um, define exactly what you're talking about because they accuse somebody of hate crime or they're accusing them of hating crime. Now, some people say, oh, you're playing words of words, it's semantics. 
Well, if you didn't know, oh foolish person, that law is semantics. Law is all about semantics, how we define things. That's why in, in legal cases, the judge will put a whole bunch of qualifications on how the jury is supposed to look at the evidence and say, don't listen to that. That has been dismissed. And jury, uh, you pretend like you didn't hear it and all these sorts of things because it's all words. Otherwise, they will let everything enter into the discussion. But then clever lawyers liars or whatever, would be able to argue around these sort of things. So hate crime, yes, we hate crime. But a couple of things are curious about this recent incident in the European Jewish community. First of all, you mean none of the, the Jewish people had any sort of um, security, like, you know, cameras and stuff? There was no cameras on the block. Not that we encourage this, but this is what's going on in most neighborhoods, like with the the the, Klaps, the Klepsi boy. You understand? They had cameras. They followed from position to position, point to point, and was able allegedly to trace it right back to Aaron, whatever he called himself, Levi. You understand? And found out that well, yes, this guy did it. They found the body, so forth and so on, and. Right now, it just appears to be another kind of a blood libel incident, a Jew on Jew incident, and basically that's that's where that stay. Now, this particular burning of cars, as one politician, one black politician said, listen, if it was a cross, a burning cross on a black person's lawn, I mean, who should not be outraged. Shouldn't everyone be outraged? Because clearly, this, and, and KKK too, could have had KKK. Now, Hitler was very curious about it. The first incident we started to think about was the most recent case where it's a Jew on Jew thing. Now, are we saying that, well, some Jew did it or one did it for insurance money or as a cover? We would hope not. Honestly speaking, we would hope not because it would really damage the so called, for lack of a better word, the credibility of these sort of claims in the future. Although there is no eyewitnesses, nobody saw anything. Everybody only saw it when it was burning. Somebody filmed when it was burning. I guess, you know, maybe it started from a small fire to a big fire, but no one saw anything. There's no surveillance cameras, you know, that show anybody, even those grainy pictures of people running around, you know. But now here's what they're doing. They're looking at some... DNA on a whole bunch of beer bottles in the neighborhood. Very, very curious. So you mean somebody sat down there drinking beer, right, and then they decided, okay, let's burn some Jews' cars and spray paint swastikas and spray paint um, KKK. Now, the next matter is that the Klan or the Ku Klux Klan and neo-Nazis and, and white supremacist sort of racists do target Jews, European Jews, and do target blacks. And many times they sum up the two together, the blacks and the Jews. They figure that the blacks are getting uppity because the Jews are helping them out, and blacks and Jews have worked together in certain civil rights ways before. So it doesn't neglect the possibility that it might be some white supremacist sort of types, because now that America, the financial situation, the jobless situation, they're looking for somebody to blame. And so they could look at the Jewish community, they could look at certain blacks and say, well, they're doing better than me, you know, and the European is known for that sort of, I'm talking about white, not all white people, but hey, the Ku Klux Klan is not a black organization, it's not a Jewish organization. The neo-Nazis is not a black organization, not a Jewish organization. And those organizations particularly target blacks and white European Jews. Okay? But then the possibility that nobody saw nothing in this predominantly Jewish neighborhood and that they would write these specific things on burning cars, but they would leave on a non-burning car, KKK, does make it kind of suspicious in light of the most recent Jew-on-Jew -Jew crime. So, of course, we're putting out there that, well, there might be something a little more suspicious to this. Maybe they didn't even think that it would call this sort of a biased hate crime attention to it. So whoever did it might be keeping quiet. Perhaps, perhaps the police, the investigators will get to the bottom of it. They haven't found any suspect, but they are going to do DNA 
on all of the now suppose they find that okay this dna traced back to some black people some black person went to jail for some some non-violent kind of offense so maybe in a violent offense does that mean that this individual did the crime and wasn't just out there drinking a beer with their buddies on some other day i mean do they clean up these bottles since it was over the weekend too do they clean up the uh, going into the weekend do they clean up these bottles you know these beer bottles all the time or how long do beer bottles stay out there and suppose somebody else was picked up a bottle or something hey, who knows so far there's no real evidence of who really did this sort of crime. But this does not dismiss that hate crimes or racially, ethnically motivated crimes by a lot of disaffected white folks. Because they did a study recently, I think it was out in some other suburban neighborhood, and found out that a lot of the people, this is when Obama was about to do his run up, you know, for the election, that a lot of these people are clearly and still patently racist, but they've learned to keep to keep quiet about you know about the whole thing. So, how should we approach this incident? Well, first of all, we shouldn't really keep we shouldn't keep silent about it. And this is one reason why we're gonna you know post this brief commentary on hate crimes and the most recent um, incident in the uh, European Jewish European American Jewish. Um, neighborhood, because it is something that we should be against. Now, some would say, well, why would a black person even concern themselves? But isn't it obvious? But so far, like we say, they haven't found anyone. You understand they're going to use $30,000 for reward money. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be pointing at anybody that they think, oh, are you anti-Semitic? You don't like Jews? You understand that a lot of people can have different issues which are not hateful, but are just differences of opinion, different sort of issues. So how are we going to know when they really find out who did it? Is somebody going to stand up and say, hey, I did it, you understand, because I don't like Jews? Most likely not. Now, here's the final point about this whole thing for now, right? The final point, and this is like fresh in, is that this incident happened on the on the eve or anniversary of something called Crystal Knock. Crystal Knock. Do you know what Crystal Knock is? Well, Crystal Knock is actually the, 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 the night when the Nazi, you've probably seen the old black and white film, when the Nazis basically targeted the Jewish community in, in Germany and I think other parts of Europe where they broke shop owners' windows, where they set on fire, they might have arrested and beat up people. But this was the beginning of what they call the um, Holocaust, as well as the, um, what's that again? Uh, that word that His Majesty Haile Selassie was said to have coined or was coined because of Haile Selassie. Actually, it was coined, this word was coined because of what the Italian Catholics was doing against Ethiopian Christians. It was called uh, genocide. In fact, genocide was actually coined because of what was happening to black people. A lot of people don't know. And at the heart of this was, was Ethiopia and His Imperial Majesty made a speech before the League of Nations. You know, His Majesty, the line of the tribe of Judah. So we do have a Jewish or Hebraic connection as black people. And what he spoke, it was translated from them hard. And the translator couldn't figure out, like, well, how to translate this. And they put it literally as killing of a seed. And the killing of a seed or of a race is literally translatable as genocide. So the word genocide doesn't have its origin with the so-called European Jews, but really with the black Jews or the black Hebrews or the Ethiopians. So this is something that... They don't teach you this in school, but you can look it up. You can look it up in his Massey autobiography translated by Edward Ullendorf, and he gives it, I think, in a, in a footnote near the end of book one. But anyway, back to Crystal Knock. So Crystal Knock and this particular burning of, of, of cars belonging to or owned by um, Jews in Midwood, the incident happened and the anniversary of this Holocaust, this Holocaust um, situation, you know, what the Nazis did. 
So you have to ask yourself, who done it? I mean, this is a real interesting mystery. Who would have known that? When we heard about that, we were like, that is curious. Crystal knock, I mean, who observes these things? Well, the European Jews observe it. Who else observes these things? Well, the neo-Nazis and, and the Ku Klux Klan and anyone else who is patently um, racist in that Eurocentric white supremacist um, sort of way. So who done this incident? Who would have known about this incident? Well, one thing we say in closing, we, we hope that it's not another Aaron uh, Levi kind of a case. In other words, where it's not another kind of a Jew on Jew sort of a uh, crime. Why? Because that would definitely undermine their credibility or their community next time an incident happened. If it, you know, um, Hashem forbids, it's a real kind of an incident. But it should put all of us on alert. You know, we're moving into a whole new world, and this new world doesn't appear to be a white supremacist world, you understand, and therefore there's a lot of angry people. I mean, let's not forget, you know, the Oklahoma City bombing, so forth and so on. While they thought it was this person, terrorist, so forth and so on, these are so-called homegrown terrorists, you know, or American, white, Anglo-American terrorists. And those sort of people, Nazis and Ku Klux Klan, two particular people they hate the most, and that is so-called European Jews and black folks. So black people, don't be so quick to say, oh, the Jews, the, the Jews, whatever, you know, to dismiss it. You understand? Because like that old saying, first they came for this group, I said nothing. Then they came for the next group, I said nothing. Then they came for the next group, I said Then when they came for me, there was nobody left to say anything. We may have our issues with so-called European Jews, even a lot of the racism that they have in their interpretation and misinterpretation of the, the, the shared Judaic biblical Torah faith. However, those are issues that we don't have to resort to the wrath of man because as uh, Yaakov, James said, in the book of James, that the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God, works not the righteousness of Jah. And we hope, like we said before, it's not some knucklehead black person who's doing this, you understand, as well. Or they might just decide that they're going to pick up some knucklehead because of the beer bottle kind of connection and the person has a criminal record, so everybody's going to say, yeah, this person did it. However it is, let's just continue to be diligent to watch and to pray. Do we hate crime? Yes, we hate crime. You understand? Who would love crime but an evildoer? You understand? And this clearly was an evil deed. But we need to investigate and need to check this out, follow this case, and find out, well, who is really behind it? And hopefully it's not the boy who cried wolf. You understand? Because when the boy really cried about something, nobody heard him. Anyway, this is Ras Yadinos Teferi. This is Wendem Yadin reporting for Ethiopian World Net. More to come. Shalom Rastafari.